What's going on everybody? Welcome to another OpenCV with Python tutorial. In this tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is uh, a slightly manual version of foreground extraction. It's not necessarily manual, but I suppose foreground extraction in a region of the image, basically. So let's go ahead and just get started and uh, hopefully it will come to light. For this tutorial, we're going to use an image. Um, I'm going to use this image here. It's me staring off thinking about world peace and how we can come to it. And uh, so that's the image I'm going to use. If you need to copy that image, as usual, go to pythonprogramming.net, find this tutorial, and all the documents will be there. So um, along with CV2 and NumPy as NP, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now we're going to specify the image. The image is cv2.mread, and the image name, again, is a pretty long one. Open cv python foreground extraction tutorial.jpg. Feel free to shorten that if you want. Mask is going to be np.zeros of the image shape. and then np.uint8 for the data type. Okay, uh, then we're gonna have a background model and a foreground model. Both of these are gonna be basically the exact same thing. np.0s165, uh, and then we're gonna have a numpy float here, np.float, oops, 64. That's our background model that we'll use, and then our foreground model. Good. And then the rect. This is going to be the rectangle that we are going to use uh, for my image. If you're using your own image, you'll want to find the rectangle that encases what you envision to be the foreground of whatever your image is. Um, next, uh, what we're going to want to do is what's called grab cut. So uh, what grab cut is going to allow you to do is basically grab the grab and cut a certain region basically. So anyway, cv2.grab cut, capital C there, it's camel casing, image, mask, then rect, background model, foreground model. Uh, we'll work with five there, and then cv2.gc, which is grab cut, in it with rect. Then we're going to have um, mask2 is going to be equal to mp dot wherever it is the case that the mask equals to or the mask equals zero and then zero one and then as type u int eight okay and what's happening here is this either zero or two uh, that's where the mass two is. The other options would be one and three, basically. Um, then we're going to say the image now is equal to image times the mask two, and then some fancy um, slicing going on here: colon, comma, colon, comma, np dot new axes, and then uh, we will do plt dot show image plt.colorbar and then plt.show. This will just show like a color range for us. This will actually show the image. Um, and what we should get is basically just my head at the front here. Correct. So the crux of this, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and the, Im the original image again was this image. Okay. So, um, so we, we extracted the head, and in theory, we could start like a video feed and, and constantly do this, but obviously we you know we sliced some of my hair off here and stuff like that. So it's not exactly perfect, but it is pretty good at detecting the foreground and the background. And, and what would happen, um, basically on any image, you can use all of this code is just something you would keep pretty much identical, right? The only difference that you need to make is in this rectangle. So what if we made the rectangle, um, let's see, we've got a about 300 by 500 image here, or well, 500 wide, 300 tall. So what if we said, um, 
I'm trying to think of a good one here. Uh, <laughs> zero, zero. Um, let's do the 300 and a 300. Let's try that. <laughs> okay, so so even in this case, you can still kind of get. Um, well, it's not really the greatest, but generally in the front, you've got this night, like the red is in the front and the blue is in the background. And you could probably continue um, like the wrecked, let's say 300, uh, 500. Let's see if it'll slow. And if we bring it in, probably what it would do is remove the entire background. Like if we brought it in a little bit, hopefully. Uh, maybe if we did 50, 50, 300, 500, possibly. So now we've got my body, right? And like my chair that I'm sitting in, there's another chair in the background and that. So even if you don't have like a perfect cut of like just the head uh, and, and you just kind of bring it in slightly, it, it will probably work um, just fine. So keep that in mind. It's actually, even though it's, it's grab cut is kind of a manual process, you could probably take width and height of your image um, add 10% to the X, the Y, and then go to 10% or go to 90% of the X, Y. And that would probably be a dynamic way to kind of automatically just kind of remove the background in a sort of green screen type fashion. Now, obviously it might not work every single time, but it, it would probably work most of the time decently. Um, so anyways, uh, that's it with more of a manual foreground extraction. We'll actually end up covering another form of foreground extraction. It'll be a little different than this one was, but we'll talk about that probably in not the next tutorial, but the one after that. In the next tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is corner detection, which can be used for a variety of things. For It can be used for like re-rendering three-dimensional objects. Uh, it could be used for tracking motion in a video and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, that's what we're going to talk about in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching.